Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Recently, a subscriber asked if I could do a video about Hermes because a fellow YouTuber, Purse on Flick, posted a video about her shopping experience at Hermes. In the video, Mel was quite upset about the customer service she received at Hermes. So I thought I would do a video as well about my own personal experience. So if you're interested, please keep watching. As some of you know, the wholesale structure at Hermes is quite different, especially if you compare it to other luxury brands like Dior, Fendi, Prada or Louis Vuitton. This is especially true if you're interested in their Birkin, Kelly or Constance bags. I think within the luxury community, it is a fairly common knowledge that you need a purchase history in order to get one of these bags. So for example, if you are looking to buy a Birkin 25, it is very likely you need to spend quite a bit of money on other products first, such as shoes, scarves, jewelry, and so on. As a customer, I can understand why this whole business strategy will not sit well with a lot of people. However, this business model is not actually uncommon, especially when the demand is way higher than the supply. In fact, a lot of luxury brands use their very popular pieces as a leverage to increase the general sales for their other products. So for example, if you want to get a Rolex Daytona in stainless steel, you need to be a regular customer. Same goes with Chanel. If you have a purchase history, the perfect Chanel mini flap will be reserved for you, whereas other people will have to join the waiting list. So the way I see it, it is just how the business works, but it's up to me to walk away when the time is right. It's quite similar to how I've stopped buying Chanel because the prices for the handbags are now way higher than what I'm willing to pay for. In terms of how much you need to spend before getting offered a bag, to be honest, I've never asked my sales associate the question directly. However, I've come across some videos where people were told quite clearly that it has to be the one-to-one -one ratio. So basically, the purchase history has to amount to more or less the price of the bag you are after. Uh, for me personally, I bought this Hermes CDC bracelet in rose gold and quite soon after that, I was offered a bag and I asked for the Hermes Kelly 28 in black Togo leather and gold hardware. This bag actually cost more than the bracelet, but it wasn't far off from the one-to-one -one ratio. So I would say if you're quite new to Hermes, the one-to-one -one ratio would be the general rule of thumb to follow. However, I think after you've built a relationship with your essay, the requirement will not be as rigid anymore. For example, I was actually offered this uh, Hermes Kelly 25 about a year and a half ago, even though I didn't actually buy anything from Hermes in that whole year. Having said that, I don't expect this to happen every single year, especially because I've cut down on my shopping a lot, whether it is Hermes or anything else. Some people told me they are quite hesitant about building a purchase history because they are not exactly interested in anything else from Hermes apart from their handbags. Now, I think this is quite a tricky one because forcing yourself to buy something you don't like is never a good idea, especially when it costs a fortune. For me personally, I actually enjoy a lot of things from Hermes. For example, I really like their rose gold pieces and I think their cashmere scarves are so soft and lovely. In my opinion, Hermes pieces are generally very well made. So if my wardrobe is missing something, I will consider shopping at Hermes, but I'll certainly resist buying something just to add to my purchase history. So for example, I only have one pair of sandals in my shoe collection. And these are the Hermes Oran sandals in the color tan. As much as I enjoy them, I don't actually get to wear them a lot because of the weather in the UK, which is why I'm not looking to buy another pair. Same goes with small leather goods. I never buy any Hermes wallets, pouches or card holders because I really don't need anything. Some of you know I've embraced luxury minimalism now, but even a few years ago, I only bought what I really wanted from Hermes. And seeing I've ticked off a lot of wishlist items, I now don't have as much to buy from Hermes anymore. Now that will definitely affect the likelihood of me getting a back offer, which I'm perfectly okay with because after all, if it's meant to be, it will be. 
Some of you might think I'm a bit biased and I'm only saying this because I already have a collection of handbags. But like I've said many times before, for me, things are just things and if they don't serve me, they are just expensive clutters. This is why I've actually turned down a few bag offers from Hermes because they were simply not my perfect bags. So for example, I was once offered a Birkin 25 in the color grey, which is like a milky white color. It's absolutely beautiful, but I was just really worried about color transfer. So I kindly turned down the bag. Some people said I had a heart of steel to turn down such a lovely bag, but the way I see it, Having a bag that I'm too scared to use is a burden, mentally and physically. Anyway, my point is, if you are going to spend a lot of money, you need to buy what you love and enjoy. And when you see that bag offer as a cherry on the cake, rather than the condition to buy a lot of things you don't like, it will make your shopping experience a lot more pleasant. In terms of customer service, everyone I've come across at Hermes has always been very polite and helpful. Now obviously, before I had a purchase history, every time I asked about a Birkin or a Kelly, the answer was always no, but in many different polite ways, such as no, we don't have any in stock today, or no, we've not had any shipment for a while now, or no, but why don't you come back sometime next week to check again? Now that I think about it, the sale associates were basically just following policies they are probably really tired about having to repeat themselves all the times as well. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong in asking, but just prepare yourself. The answer will not be very exciting. Anyway, my shopping experience at Hermes has always been very pleasant. Even before I met the sale associate I work with now. For example, I asked about a uh, Lindy 26 because they are always unavailable whenever I drop by. So I told one of the sales associates that I was very interested and to my surprise, four weeks later, I got a phone call. So I bought the Lindy 26 in the color Sarge. I also bought a few things here and there with no intention of building a purchase history. So I was just working with a different sales associate every time. And on every occasion, the customer service was always very good. I met my sales associate about three and a half or four years ago and we just clicked. Again, before her, I came across several people in the same store, but me and her just got on really well from the beginning. And I feel like that's because she never pushes me to buy anything. For example, about two years ago, I was offered an Hermes Constance bag in the black box ladder. It was absolutely beautiful, but I wasn't very sure about the smooth ladder at all. So she told me to not buy the bag if I wasn't going to enjoy using it. So I didn't feel any pressure to have to buy the bag. And at Hermes, a lot of pieces are not readily available, whether it is a belt, a pair of shoes, a piece of jewelry, or you name it. So if I'm interested in something, I do have to rely on my sales associate to do the arrangement to get the item in. So after all these hassles, you can imagine it can be quite hard to say, no, I don't want to buy it. But with my sales associate, I just feel really comfortable being honest with her. I know this is a business relationship mostly, but I do genuinely like her. A lot of you know I don't shop a lot now, but during Christmas time, even my husband will remind me to send my sales associate a Christmas card. It's like even he really appreciates all the help she's given me. When you found a sale associate that you can work with, never feel obligated to buy something just because you feel like you can't say no. The thing is, after you build a relationship with your essay, he or she will start to know your preferences really well. Now this can really work in your favor, but it can also break the bank for you. For example, if a bracelet comes in the store today and is in your favorite color, hardware and leather, it can be very tempting. And now imagine you're getting these messages every other week. In fact, a few weeks ago, I received an email about this from a subscriber. And Kiki, hi if you're watching. So Kiki told me she started working with the same sales associate since last summer. And just within the last 12 months, she managed to get one Birkin and two Kelly bags. However, she now feels trapped because every time she gets a message from the sale associate about any new stocks, she feels the urge to go in to buy these pieces. 
Now I feel like whenever we get a personal message from a sales associate, it can give us that sense of exclusivity because it is quite a personal service. So it will be harder for us to say no thank you. Besides, Kiki also told me she's worried if she doesn't keep buying, she will never get another back offer. So she asked for my opinion. To be honest, I think if you already have a second thought about buying something, it is a very clear sign that you either don't like the item that much or you feel like you've spent too much and it's time to stop. Besides, if you keep going at this rate and keep shopping in this fashion, you're basically encouraging the essay to keep tempting you and it will just become a never-ending rat race. More importantly, if you buy a lot of things with this uncertain and guilty feeling, even when you eventually get offered a very hard to get handbag, I don't think you'll feel very happy at all. So I would say don't worry about offending the SA because honesty is always the best policy. Some people ask me if I'm worried about selling my Hermes pieces on my channel because what if I get blacklisted and what if I never get another back offer again? And the answer is I'm not really worried. Now the truth is I buy things because I like them. I never purchase anything with the intention of selling them for a profit later. Unfortunately though, sometimes things don't work out and other times my liking and my preferences change. So I'm not afraid to sell the pieces that don't serve me anymore. For example, I bought this Irma CDC bracelet about four years ago. I still have it because I really do enjoy it. Meanwhile, I sold the Hermes Kelly necklace in rose gold because I wasn't really using it that much. So I'm not a reseller by any stretch of imagination. It is just me managing my own personal collection. Having said that, with everything I sell, I will take into account the market value and the general pricing on the secondhand market. Another question I get a lot is, should I just get the handbag from a reseller or a consignment service? Now, I think this really depends on your personal situation. My understanding is even the Hermes sale associates cannot really control what kind of shipment is coming in. So if you are very particular about the hardware, size, leather and color of the handbag, then the reseller's catalog might be more comprehensive, but they also charge a lot more. So I think if you are very specific about the bag details and you don't like anything else from Hermes and you just want the handbag right now, then reseller might be an option to look at. At the end of the day, only you can decide if the surplus is worth paying for. So those are my thoughts about Hermes shopping. I think when it comes to craftsmanship and quality, Hermes is outstanding, so it is still a brand I will buy from. But that doesn't mean I'm happy to pay for everything Hermes. In fact, given how the business works, I think it's even more important to set boundaries and say no when the time is right. On that note, I would love to hear about your experience shopping at Hermes. So please share it down below. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.